February 27th Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible Leviticus chapters 18 through 20 from the Old Testament The Lord spoke to Moses, Speak to the Israelites and tell them, I am the Lord your God. You must not do as they do in the land of Egypt where you have been living, and you must not do as they do in the land of Canaan into which I am about to bring you. You must not walk in their statutes. You must observe my regulations, and you must be sure to walk in my statutes. I am the Lord your God. So you must keep my statutes and my regulations. Anyone who does so will live by keeping them. I am the Lord. No man is to approach any close relative to have sexual intercourse with her. I am the Lord. You must not expose your father's nakedness by having sexual intercourse with your mother. She is your mother. You must not have intercourse with her. You must not have sexual intercourse with your father's wife. She is your father's nakedness. You must not have sexual intercourse with your sister, whether she is your father's daughter or your mother's daughter, whether she is born in the same household or born outside it. You must not have sexual intercourse with either of them. You must not expose the nakedness of your son's daughter or your daughter's daughter by having sexual intercourse with them because they are your own nakedness. You must not have sexual intercourse with the daughter of your father's wife, born of your father. She is your sister. You must not have intercourse with her. You must not have sexual intercourse with your father's sister. She is your father's flesh. You must not have sexual intercourse with your mother's sister because she is your mother's flesh. You must not expose the nakedness of your father's brother. You must not approach his wife to have sexual intercourse with her. She is your aunt. You must not have sexual intercourse with your daughter-in-law. She is your son's wife. You must not have intercourse with her. You must not have sexual intercourse with your brother's wife. She is your brother's nakedness. You must not have sexual intercourse with both a woman and her daughter. You must not take his wife, either her son's daughter or her daughter's daughter, to have intercourse with them. They are closely related to her. It is lewdness. You must not take a woman in marriage and then marry her sister as a rival wife while she is still alive to have sexual intercourse with her. You must not approach a woman in her menstrual impurity to have sexual intercourse with her. You must not have sexual intercourse with the wife of your fellow citizen to become unclean with her. You must not give any of your children as an offering to Molech so that you do not profane the name of your God. I am the Lord. You must not have sexual intercourse with a male as one has sexual intercourse with a woman. It is a detestable act. You must not have sexual intercourse with any animal to become defiled with it, and a woman must not stand before an animal to have sexual intercourse with it. It is a perversion. Do not defile yourselves with any of these things, for the nations which I am about to drive out before you have been defiled with all these things. Therefore the land has become unclean, and I have brought the punishment for its iniquity upon it, so that the land has vomited out its inhabitants." You yourselves must obey my statutes and my regulations and must not do any of these abominations, both the native citizen and the resident foreigner in your midst. For the people who were in the land before you have done all these abominations and the land has become unclean. So do not make the land vomit you out because you defile it, just as it has vomited out the nations that were before you. For if anyone does any of these abominations, the persons who do them will be cut off from the midst of their people. You must obey my charge to not practice any of the abominable statues that have been done before you, so that you do not defile yourselves by them. I am the Lord your God. The Lord spoke to Moses. Speak to the whole congregation of the Israelites and tell them, You must be holy because I, the Lord your God, am holy. Each of you must respect his mother and his father, and you must keep my Sabbaths. I am the Lord your God. Do not turn to idols, and you must not make for yourselves gods of cast metal. I am the Lord your God. When you sacrifice a peace offering, sacrifice to the Lord. You must sacrifice it so that it is accepted for you. It must be eaten on the day of your sacrifice and on the following day, but what is left over until the third day must be burnt up. If, however, it is eaten on the third day, it is spoiled, it will not be accepted. 
and the one who eats it will bear his punishment for iniquity, because he has profaned what is holy to the Lord. That person will be cut off from his people. When you gather in the harvest of your land, you must not completely harvest the corner of your field, and you must not gather up the gleanings of your harvest. You must not pick your vineyard bare, and you must not gather up the fallen grapes of your vineyard. You must leave them for the poor and the foreigner. I am the Lord your God. You must not steal, you must not tell lies, and you must not deal falsely with your fellow citizens. You must not swear falsely in my name, so that you do not profane the name of your God. I am the Lord. You must not oppress your neighbor or commit robbery against him. You must not withhold the wages of the hired laborer overnight until morning. You must not curse a deaf person or put a stumbling block in front of a blind person. You must fear your God. I am the Lord. You must not deal unjustly in judgment. You must neither show partiality to the poor nor honor the rich. You must judge your fellow citizen fairly. You must not go about as a slanderer among your people. You must not stand idly by when your neighbor's life is at stake. I am the Lord. You must not hate your brother in your heart. You must surely reprove your fellow citizens so that you do not incur sin on account of him. You must not take vengeance or bear a grudge against the children of your people, but you must love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. You must keep my statutes. You must not allow two different kinds of your animals to breed. You must not sow your field with two different kinds of seed, and you must not wear a garment made of two different kinds of fabric. When a man has sexual intercourse with a woman, although she is a slave woman designated for another man, and she has not yet been ransomed, or freedom has not been granted to her, there will be an obligation to pay compensation. They must not be put to death because she was not free. He must bring his guilt offering to the Lord at the entrance of the meeting tent, a guilt offering ram. And the priest is to make atonement for him with the ram of the guilt offering before the Lord for his sin that he has committed, and he will be forgiven of his sin that he has committed. When you enter the land and plant any fruit tree, you must consider its fruit to be forbidden. Three years it will be forbidden to you. It must not be eaten. In the fourth year all its fruit will be holy, praise offerings to the Lord. Then in the fifth year you may eat its fruit to add its produce to your harvest. I am the Lord your God. You must not eat anything with the blood still in it. You must not practice either divination or soothsaying. You must not round off the corners of the hair on your head or ruin the corners of your beard. You must not slash your body for a dead person or incise a tattoo on yourself. I am the Lord. Do not profane your daughter by making her a prostitute so that the land does not practice prostitution and become full of lewdness. You must keep my Sabbath and fear my sanctuary. I am the Lord. Do not turn to the spirits of the dead and do not seek familiar spirits to become unclean by them. I am the Lord your God. You must stand up in the presence of the aged, honor the presence of an elder, and fear your God. I am the Lord. When a foreigner resides with you in your land, you must not oppress him. The foreigner who resides with you must be to you like a native citizen among you, so you must love him as yourself, because you were foreigners in the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. You must not do injustice in the regulation of measures, whether of length, weight, or volume. You must have honest balances, honest weights, an honest ephah, and an honest hin. I am the Lord your God who brought you out from the land of Egypt. You must be sure to obey all my statutes and regulations. I am the Lord. The Lord spoke to Moses. You are to say to the Israelites, Any man from the Israelites or from the foreigners who reside in Israel, who gives any of his children to Molech, must be put to death. The people of the land must pelt him with stones. I myself will set my face against that man and cut him off from the midst of his people, because he has given some of his children to Molech and thereby defiled my sanctuary and profaned my holy name. If, however, the people of the land shut their eyes to that man when he gives some of his children to Molech, so that they do not put him to death, I myself will set my face against that man and his clan. I will cut off from the midst of their people both him and all who follow after him 
in spiritual prostitution to commit prostitution by worshiping Molech. The person who turns to the spirits of the dead and familiar spirits to commit prostitution by going after them, I will set my face against that person and cut him off from the midst of his people. You must sanctify yourselves and be holy, because I am the Lord your God. You must be sure to obey my statutes. I am the Lord who sanctifies you. If anyone curses his father and mother, he must be put to death. He has cursed his father and mother, his blood guilt is on himself. If a man commits adultery with his neighbor's wife, both the adulterer and the adulteress must be put to death. If a man has sexual intercourse with his father's wife, he has exposed his father's nakedness. Both of them must be put to death. Their blood guilt is on themselves. If a man has sexual intercourse with his daughter-in-law, both of them must be put to death. They have committed perversion. Their blood guilt is on themselves. If a man has sexual intercourse with a male, as one has sexual intercourse with a woman, the two of them have committed an abomination. They must be put to death. Their blood guilt is on themselves. If a man has sexual intercourse with both a woman and her mother, it is lewdness. Both he and they must be burnt to death. So there is no lewdness in your midst. If a man has sexual intercourse with any animal, he must be put to death, and you must kill the animal. If a woman approaches any animal to have sexual intercourse with it, you must kill the woman, and the animal must be put to death. Their blood guilt is on themselves. If a man has sexual intercourse with his sister, whether the daughter of his father or his mother, so that he sees her nakedness and she sees his nakedness, it is a disgrace. They must be cut off in the sight of the children of their people. He has exposed his sister's nakedness. He will bear his punishment for iniquity. If a man has sexual intercourse with a menstruating woman and uncovers her nakedness, he has laid bare her fountain of blood and she has exposed the fountain of her blood. So both of them must be cut off from the midst of their people. You must not expose the nakedness of your mother's sister and your father's sister, for such a person has laid bare his own close relative. They must bear their punishment for iniquity. If a man has sexual intercourse with his aunt, he has exposed his uncle's nakedness. They must bear responsibility for their sin. They will die childless. If a man has sexual intercourse with his brother's wife, it is indecency. He has exposed his brother's nakedness. They will be childless. You must be sure to obey all my statutes and regulations, so that the land to which I am about to bring you, to take up residence there, does not vomit you out. You must not walk in the statutes of the nation which I am about to drive out before you. Because they have done all these things, and I am filled with disgust against them. So I have said to you, you yourselves will possess their land, and I myself will give it to you for a possession, a land flowing with milk and honey. I am the Lord your God who has set you apart from the other peoples. Therefore you must distinguish between the clean animal and the unclean, and between the unclean bird and the clean. And you must not make yourselves detestable by means of an animal or bird or anything that creeps on the ground. Creatures I have distinguished for you as unclean. You must be holy to me because I, the Lord, am holy and I have set you apart from the other peoples to be mine. A man or woman who has in them a spirit of the dead or a familiar spirit must be put to death. They must pelt them with stones. Their blood guilt is on themselves. God, it makes me sad when people pick and choose which part of your Bible that they are going to set apart and uphold themselves or other people to. It's not why you created us or the Bible or our lives. We are your chosen people your chosen children and we are called to be set apart and it doesn't say set apart with parentheses after it of what parts we need to follow and not follow you call us to be holy to live a life that's undefiled 
and we are going to screw up and we are we are going to sin and we are going to need your forgiveness over and over and over again but that doesn't mean that that's not still what we try and work towards every single morning when we get up that we have been called to something different than this world and I know I can only speak personally. I know that the hardest struggle for me, God, is the call of the world versus what you've called us to. And it's two completely separate things. It couldn't be more clear that, that Earth is Satan's world. <laughs> and when I catch glimpses of what you've called me to, of what holy really means to you, what set apart really means to you, I get really excited, but I also get really scared. I don't know, I don't know how to live up to that. I do know that I can't do it by myself. I do know with you, all things are possible. So today, God, is as we start our day, can you please help fill our hearts with what causes us to be set apart and what makes us holy and what sets us apart from what everybody else of the world is doing? Show us those things that we might have diluted in our life, diluted enough to make us feel comfortable. And especially here in America, we're so incredibly comfortable. Show us all the things that we've diluted out of your word that makes us more of the world than set apart. God, cause us to live a life that looks odd to other people. <laughs> we should be uncomfortable as Christians because we live in a world where what we're called to do doesn't fit in with this world. So today, help, help make that oddness be okay. The fact that we are called to be your children, that we're called to be set apart, that we're called to something completely different than what the world calls us to. And that is amazing and incredible and awesome. But I do know that for me, that's the hardest part about being a human here on earth. As I move further and further away from this world and all its trappings and move closer and closer to what you meant by set apart, isolation sets in, fear sets in, and also this I no longer fit in feeling comes over. And ever since we were little, we were taught how to fit into this world. How to make friends, how to play nice with people. It's all we we're taught in school, at least in the early years. And now I'm still being taught how to play nice with other people, but in a completely different way. Not to play nice, so that they will like me and necessarily even be my friend, but to be nice because I'm reflecting who you are, God. And that's completely different than what the world's calling me to do. I know this isn't going to be solved in one day. It will never be solved until I get called to heaven. But God, I am asking you to help me work on this because I struggle every single day with what the world is asking from me and offering to me versus what I know I'm supposed to do to be set apart, to be called holy. I need your strength in doing this, God. I need your wisdom. I need you to show me those steps to take. I am ready. 
We've had this conversation a lot lately. I am ready. But this is going to be the hardest thing that I've ever had to do. Create in me that new, clean heart that desires only to live not of this world. Who desires to be set apart. Who desires to work on every day being more and more like your son. I can only do that with you, God. In your son's name we pray. Amen.